Hey guys, <clears throat> welcome to another video diary. Let me just put this, <laughs> let me just get this as much as I can. Hopefully this will work. I have this on my little box on my table. It's a little too, the angle of it. <clears throat> Let's see if that works. <laughs> of course not. Of course it doesn't work, you guys. Okay, there we go. So welcome to another video diary. We are looking at the living room space of my house and we have the gorgeous fall setup. Let me just show that to you. That's the box I balance the thing on. I freaking love my little tablecloth. I got this tablecloth at, um, at Michael's and Man, you guys, we went to Michael's yesterday. <clears throat> I'm talking a little low because I have the window open, but the neighbor's gonna hear everything because I have a loud voice. Anyways, um, we went to Michael's yesterday and I was shocked to see that Christmas is in Michael's now. So <laughs> all of the Halloween stuff that was taking up three aisles is now condensed into one aisle. Everything is 50% off at Michael's for the Halloween decor. Um, so I was walking through and seeing if I wanted anything. And I was just kind of like, eh, I don't really need anything right now. I didn't really need to spend the money. So I was specifically there to purchase a, um, what do they call it? Like a wreath hanger <laughs> for the front door. Because um, you guys remember the, the Halloween wreath that I made. So um, I bought the hanger thing to put on our front door and I am I hung up my wreath yesterday. So I'm really nervous that someone's gonna steal it because it's really cute. Um, so today we're gonna be going down the hill to visit my parents and see his parents and he, my husband needs to take his uniforms to get, um, some of them need to get altered. And so um, I told him when I'm at my dad's house, I'm gonna ask my dad for those little zip tie things and I'm gonna tie my wreath to the, the hanger <laughs> so that if anyone wants to steal it, they're gonna have to like break open that hanger from my door. So, you know, cause I would be sad. I worked hard on that wreath. It took me four hours to make it. <laughs> Coffee. Um, so, I just got done doing the weekly, the weekly um, energy reading. So if you guys are interested in watching that, I'm going to be posting that video next after I upload this one to my YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> but basically, the weekly energy readings is just me pulling cards for all four of the elements. So those of you guys who are new to my channel, because I do have some new subscribers, um, those of you who are new. A weekly energy reading is me pulling cards for the four elements. So it's earth, air, fire, water. Um, and basically you correlate that with your sun, moon, and or rising sign. And you can watch, you know, to see what cards I pulled for you and what is the energy that is, what is it looking at for the week. Um, what is that? What else? Um, I post it for my YouTube channel, I, mean, I post it for my Instagram TV, so the video is filmed vertically, um, but I still post it on YouTube because I know some of you guys don't have Instagram, so I give you the opportunity to see it as well. <laughs> so those of you guys who are new to the channel, that is Starla, she's right there in the window. So um, the cool thing about fall season up here in the desert is that um, it still gets warm during the day, but it's nice and cool and chilly in the morning. So what I like to do is open the windows for the cats and Starla loves looking out the window. And then like right over to, um, well, it's, I guess it would be the left on the video. I don't know. But over here, this right here <laughs> um, is the window blinds. We have the sliding glass door that leads outside. And so I like to open it just to, like about that much and Starla likes to sit in the window and just look outside. So she loves it. I have a feeling that if Starla had the had the ability to go outside, she would totally do it. But I don't trust the other facts that we have, like coyotes and snakes and wild running dogs around here that <laughs> I wouldn't want Starla outside. So she has to stay inside. She could just enjoy it from, you know, the screen. 
She could she could enjoy the wilderness from the screen. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to talk about the vampire tarot today because um, I have owned this deck for probably about a good five years or so. Um, I've been doing my tarot stuff for seven years, and um, I want to say the vampire tarot. I purchased it like two years into my practice. Um, I used to watch, and I still sometimes watch this person. Um, so the Rune Scopes does um, a YouTube channel of runes and tarot readings. And I was really, I just really loved the way that she would just do it all and like her readings and I, I liked it. But um, I don't always keep up with her monthly readings. And so um, I kind of like fallen away from watching her channel so much. Um, but I remember there was a specific deck that she was using for a lot of the October readings one of those years that I was following her. And it was the Vampire Tarot. So I remember when she was pulling cards, the thing that caught my eye were the backs of the deck. It was just like this gorgeous red color with these like designs. Um, and I just like, I was like, ooh, I gotta have that deck. Simply because the backs just look so beautiful. Now, the cards themselves are vampire-y. Um, but they are cartoony vampires. So, um, and the artwork is just, it's kind of different. It's just, it's kind of cool and unique. Um, but, uh, this was never a deck that I pulled out to work with. I, I, unfortunately. Um, and so this year I had told myself, I'm going to be utilizing this deck way more. And I totally have. So, um, I've been pulling this one out for a lot of the client readings that I've been doing. You guys will probably see it popping up in some of the, the latest videos. Um, I've been using it like I used it for this week's weekly reading. And I'm finding that when I read with it, it's so simple. And so I don't, I don't know why I just didn't go for it before. Now there's one specific card in here that I'm absolutely in love with. And I have to show you guys. Oh, first off, the Hierophant. Look at this Hierophant card. He has like the, the blood coming out of his mouth from sucking the blood of somebody. Um, but the Queen of Wands in this deck. Oh my God, she's gorgeous. Let me just find her. Oh, here's the Queen of Wands. Okay, maybe it's not the Queen of Wands. Maybe it's like the Queen of Pentacles. I kind of like it though, like... Oh. I just, I love this deck. I think it's so cute. I have really grown to like this deck. Um, I don't know why I wouldn't use it before. Oh, here it is. The Queen of Pentacles. Look at her. She's probably my favorite out of the whole deck. I, think, I just think that she's just wild. Like she's just has this gorgeous look to her. And then the death card, you have the Grim Reaper. You can hear the school bus picking up the kids. Because it's Monday and everybody goes to school. The devil, look at that devil card. Look at his fangs. <laughs> I just, I like this deck. I think it's so cute. So... It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to see like a deck that I usually wasn't, I wasn't connected to. Um, like I really wasn't connected to it. It was one of those decks that just sat in my collection and I never touched it. I never played with it. And now this year I've been using it a lot and I'm really like having this deep appreciation for it. So I'm so glad that I didn't decide to, you know, rehome it or anything because I'm really liking it, so it's become one of my favorites this year. Um, the other thing I really love about it is I was a daredevil and I edged the deck in a red marker. Um, so I think it like really adds to that blood vampire-y kind of energy to it. <laughs> so that one's really cool and it doesn't, um, it doesn't bleed onto my fingers anymore. I remember when I first did it, it would bleed onto my fingers because it just never fully dried, um, but it's completely dry. And so I just think it has that like, that cool effect, it just goes with it. So really cool, like, I, I just like the way it looks. 
Um, so yeah, so that's my vampire tarot. And the other day, yesterday, um, I was browsing Instagram and one of the people I follow posted, they posted like what their fall decks are gonna be for between now and like December 1st. Um, and they posted another vampire tarot deck, which is one that is out of print and you find it on eBay going for like $100 or so. It's, it has a red box. It reminds me of the card backs, but it has a red box and it's also cartoony vampires um it's really similar like I, I i take this deck to be like the cheap knockoff of that one <laughs> um but it is i can't remember who it's by um but i really want it like that deck has been on my wish list for a long time and every once in a while it will pop up on ebay or it'll pop up on facebook like those um those those groups where you could trade decks and stuff and so sometimes it'll pop up and I really want to get it because it's it's um it's just one of those decks that it's, it's always been on my wish list and, and whatnot. So maybe one of these days I'll splurge on myself and um and buy one, buy a copy. Um but because it's out of print, of course, they're sold for you know hard, ridiculously large amounts of money. Um but I say ridiculously large, but I paid ridiculously large amounts of money to get a deck that I really wanted, which is my Bohemian Gothic Silver Edition. So <laughs> that's probably the most expensive deck I own. Um, but Baba Studio decks are just like, they go out of print so fast and you you will, <laughs> Starla, you will pay a lot of money for them. So yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing, my Starla? <laughs> So I have my little setup here on the table, my little centerpiece setup that I put together. And I'm so happy to show you guys my little ghosty. So this is a ghost, it's a candle, candle holder. See, he's all black from all of the years that we would light a candle and have him out. So this belonged to my mom. She bought him in the 80s, the, the year I was born. Um, hey, hey, stop it. So she, my mom said that back in the 80s, there was this lady that would, um, I guess it was kind of like Avon, you know, where you could order things and then she would she would get the deliveries and then she would go to the go to the workplaces and deliver your packages. So I want to say it was like Avon, but it was a different it was a different company. I don't know I don't know what company it was or whatever. But my mom said that she was selling um, in her catalog a lot of Halloween stuff. So back in the day, my mom you know liked to celebrate Halloween. She doesn't celebrate it anymore, which is why I have the ghost. For myself now and so um, this was one of the things that she ordered from the catalog and I remember from as a little girl like we would my mom would have a box like a big box of all of her decorations and my mom was the kind of, of person who would save all of her Halloween decorations for years and years so she had a lot of stuff from the 70s and um, and so when you like if you go on eBay and you look up like 70s Halloween decor like my mom had a lot of that stuff in her box She's since thrown a lot of it away because it falls apart. I mean, it's like Cardboard and stuff, you know, it would fall apart, but I just remember every year um, We would open that box up and me and my sister would go through and like put the Halloween decorations up And it was always the same Halloween decorations every year. So that's how special it was and um, and so this ghost was part of the whole like the whole thing of putting Halloween decorations up and I used to love the ghost and so he was usually like one of the last things that we would put up and I just have like fond memories of him on Halloween night um, when we would be trick-or-treating and stuff and my mom would always sit back at home and, and hand out candy and she would always have the ghost lit up where she was sitting and so um, every year as I got older, I would always bug my mom. I want the ghost. I want the ghost. Like, can I have the ghost? And she would never give it to me. She wouldn't give him up. And she, <laughs> and she would say, you have to, that's, a, that's between you and your sister. Well, my sister has since taken on the same role and go, gone down the same road as my mom. And she really doesn't celebrate Halloween as much as, as she's used to, as she used to. Um, so they kind of do like things with their church and whatnot, but they don't really like, do the whole Halloween-y stuff, the skeletons and all of that. So the ghosty wasn't getting much love the last few years. My mom has kept him in the box and 
along with like a lot of other things. And so I was kind of bummed about that because that was like one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts of Halloween. Like it's a fond memory. So this year I was bugging my mom about it. I was like, you don't use him. He's just in the box. You know, my sister, my sister's not going to use him. She's, she's not, she has no desire for him. Can I please have him? <laughs> so, um, like about a month ago, I was at the house and my mom's like, oh, I have something for you. And she hands me a box and it was my ghost. So she says, you can finally have him and um, enjoy. You can put him up with all of your other devil things. <laughs> That's exactly what she said. So of course she's joking, but like partly being serious. Um, and so I'm so excited. And she also gave me, oh, I forgot to put him up too. She gave me a hanging skeleton. He's like made out of like metal. He's really cute, so I have to put him up too. So anyways, um, she gave me that, and maybe if she goes through more of her box of Halloween goodies, she'll have a couple other things. But I think she's since thrown out like a lot of her 70s Halloween decor, and I'm so sad because I would have died to have had to have owned all of that. Like <laughs> that stuff is old. Well, not old, because I know like, you know, it's not old, but like it's just they don't make Halloween decorations the same. You know what I mean? Like the, the Halloween decor that they have now is so cheap and it falls apart. Um, or it's like, if you do want to spend a lot of money on it, it's super expensive. So it's just like, I just, I don't know. I just have fond memories of putting stuff, the same old thing up, like the old tape would be on this, this, the, this is the little skeletons and <laughs> it was just a sweet memory. So I love that I have my ghosty and um, my mom was like, maybe if you clean him on the inside, you can get all the soot off, but I don't want to clean him. I feel, I like, I feel like this is like just memories. Like this is soot. It's memories of all of those Halloween years that I've, you know, growing up. And so um, I love it. I love him. And he was in my little, in my tarot room. So he was like on one of my um, bookshelves. And then I put together, let me see if I could show you guys. I put together a little centerpiece thing on my table. And so I have him like kind of off to the side here next to my Dia de los Muertos skull and my, you know, just my little centerpiece. So he's there with my pumpkins, he's super cute. But yeah, I think he'll be safe there. Like I don't think the cats are gonna, you know, knock him down or destroy him or whatever, cause I would cry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was like a sweet, that was like a sweet little thing to have my, my ghosty. Super excited. Um, what else you guys? Oh, I'm still trying to read. I'm still trying to finish Pet Cemetery. <laughs> so Jess, you, Jess is, um, Black Cats and Cards. Oh my gosh, she reads so fast. So she finished Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, and then now she's diving into the to it, to the it. <laughs> was, that's what I was gonna say. She's diving into it. Um, and I, chances are she's gonna be done with that book probably by the end of this week. Um, and she just reads so fast, she's so, she's so good. And I'm so bad, but I guess like, I have to give myself credit because I started this book during like one of the most busiest weeks of the year for me. So now that like all of that is done, I feel like I can really sit down and focus on my reading and get through it. So I aim to be done with this book by this week um, because I really wanna start, I'm, I'm torn. It's like, I really wanna read it because I know that I've, I've read so many reviews and people say it's really good and creepy and stuff. But I also wanna read Mothman Diaries. And so that was the other used book that I purchased off of thrift books when I got this one. Um, so we'll see, but I mean, I could still read halt horror even beyond October. Like it doesn't always have to be in October, <laughs> but it's just like, it's been a tradition of mine for the last couple years that every October or every fall season, I read, um, a horror book. So last year it was, um, last year it was Salem's Lot and Exorcist. Those were the two that I read for October. <laughs> and then the year prior to that, um, what did I read before that? It was like a zombie book and, um, I think it was a zombie book. I don't know. I don't think I'd read more than one. I think it was just one book that I read. 
And that was when I was like, I was like on a heavy kick of zombies like all the years prior. So I would always read zombie books and stuff. Um, but yeah, so the, it's just been like a little tradition of mine. And so this year, my goal was to read Pet Cemetery, And then I was kind of like, I wanted to read Rosemary's Baby. I still have the book. I might still pick it up and read it. But then it's like, I also kind of wanted to read Mothman Diaries, and then I definitely want to read it. So those are probably going to be like the four books that I'm going to be reading throughout October and November. Um, and then I was looking for a nonfiction spooky read. Um, I have like the botanical witchcraft book that I could go through and read. Um, but I was really looking for like some sort of like a witchy nonfiction book and I have not found one that I have that's been interesting me. So I don't know. We'll see. <coughs> I feel like I'm wheezing a little bit, you guys. Like I feel like I'm getting sick. My husband's starting to get sick and <laughs> I think I'm going to get sick. I just feel a little bit tightness in my chest. I hate getting that when I get sick. So we're going to see his mom today and she's going to cook us her famous homemade chicken soup and I'm telling you like that is usually magic because usually like when I'm sick and I eat her chicken soup I usually feel better like the day or two later so <laughs> I'm hoping it has those magical effects and I've been like drinking a lot of water because I was really dehydrated during the whole like crazy week I wasn't drinking a lot of water and I had a real bad headache towards the end um so I've been drinking I've been chugging a lot of water um, and when my water bottle gets to be like almost done, I'll throw in like one of those emergency packets. And so I'll put, I'll drink some emergency just to kind of try to help. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I feel like I'm on the brink of getting sick, but I haven't quite jumped off the cliff yet. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I can kind of get rid of this little, whatever it is that's trying to come out, but we'll see. Um, but the crazy thing is I was telling my husband, I haven't been sick, like really, really sick, um, since I started my job at the library. So it's been two years. It's been two years, I want to say. Um, and so really cool. Like it's, I feel like my immune system is really good. Like it's pretty strong. I don't get sick that often. If I do get sick, it's like a day thing and then it goes away, but I don't know, you guys, I got through all of last year without getting any kind of major nasty head colds because when I get, I'm telling you, when I get head colds, I get real congested here in the throat, like in the chest area, and then I can't breathe, and I, I don't like that feeling. So I didn't get that last year, but we'll see. Let's see if I could get through the rest of this year. <laughs> um, anyways, you guys, other than that, I don't really have anything else to update you on. I hear, I hear my hubby. I think he's getting up, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video short um so that we can make some breakfast and be on our way we have a lot to do today so um i love you guys thank you guys for tuning in thank you for watching thank you guys for all of your comments i love to read your comments and just um having all of that support from you guys and if you missed the video diaries they are going to be back so i'm going to do my best to put one out at least once a day um, but I might skip a day or two every now and then it just depends. So I got to get used to my new schedule with him home now and, um, it's just been nice. So anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Have a beautiful rest of your week and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye my loves.